This video, along with subsequent follow-up videos, demonstrates the features of Nimbula Director, such as multi-tenancy, fine-grained permissioning and authorization, as well as advanced networking features for isolation. We'll assume that you've already had a chance to install and license your Nimbula Director environment based on the steps shown in our Nimbula Director installation video. After licensing Nimbula Director, you'll be automatically signed in as the root user of the root customer as shown here. The Nimbula Director UI is organized as a top pane and a bottom pane. The top pane lists objects that are selectable for viewing or editing. The bottom pane allows you to create, modify, and destroy objects. There are five main tabs at the top pane. Starting at the left, we have the User Management tab, which allows you to create and manage users, groups, and their permissions. Next, we have the Image Management tab, which allows you to create and manage image lists and machine images. An image list is a persistent list of machine images that can be used to keep track of different versions of a machine image. A machine image is a virtual machine template that you can launch into a running virtual machine instance. Then we have the Virtual Networks tab, which allows you to create and manage virtual ethernets and virtual DHCP servers. Virtual ethernets are virtual layer 2 networks that provide isolation and are implemented using VLANs. A virtual DHCP server can then be created for each vethernet to dynamically assign IP addresses to the virtual machine instances running in that vethernet. The Network Security Lists tab lets you configure a built-in distributed firewall for isolating instances and regulating traffic in and out of the cloud that is dynamically configured and independent of the underlying network. Finally, the Instance Management tab allows you to view and launch machine images into running virtual machine instances. We would now like to build out a deployment scenario where a fictitious Acme Corporation wants to provide a private cloud to serve two of their internal customers. The first internal customer consists of Acme Corporation employees. We'll call this customer Acme. The second internal customer consists of contractors from an outside firm that Acme has hired. We'll call this customer Contractors. Both of these internal customers are asking for self-service development environments. The first internal customer, called Acme, is further divided into two groups with different functions. The Machine Images group, which we'll call Images, and the Application Development group, which we'll call Apps. The Images group's job is to maintain all machine images and image lists that will be used by the rest of Acme. The Apps group's job is to develop and deploy useful applications for Acme Corporation's use, including their contractors. The Apps group uses the Images group's machine images and image lists to speed up their development. Thus, the Apps group only needs to worry about their applications, knowing that the Images group is maintaining stable and secure images for them. Although we're using a private cloud scenario to demonstrate these features, we could similarly demonstrate the features with a service provider scenario using a public cloud deployment where customers are actual separate business entities that are not related to each other. First, we'll create our two internal customers for Acme Corporation, Acme and Contractors. We'll go ahead and sign out and be taken to the login page. Here, we'll first create a customer for Acme Corporation employees. Click Create a New Customer, enter the default admin password, enter Acme as the customer name and Acme employees as the description, enter an email address, and enter a password. Click Register and will be automatically logged in as the administrator for Acme. We'll create the images and apps groups under Customer Acme in a subsequent video. Now click Sign Out and repeat the same process for the second internal customer with Contractors as the name and Acme Contractors as the description. For this video, we're going to use contractors to demonstrate our concepts. After registering, we'll be automatically logged in as the administrator for contractors. We'll demonstrate the ease of launching a virtual machine instance from a machine image. Let's browse to a default image pre-bundled with Nibula Director. Click on the Instance Management tab, which we're currently at, and click the Quick Launch button at the bottom of the page. Click on the folder icon at the left of the Contractors Administrator path. This will bring you to the root, then browse to Nimbula Public. 
you'll see one image in this list which happens to be the Lucid Lynx version of an Ubuntu machine image. In a larger installation, you might have access to many machine images where you'll have to search or browse and narrow the list, but let's simply choose the one image we have available to us at this point. Select this default image, the amount of CPU and memory as defined by shape, and the number of instances you want to launch. We'll keep things simple for now and choose a small shape and one instance to launch. These shapes are defined in the site.conf file during the installation process, but new shapes can be defined using the Nimble Director command line interface. Now click Launch. You can now see the Virtual Machine instance being launched in the top pane of the View Instances subtab. By clicking Refresh, you'll notice the state changing from queued to starting to running. During the queued state, Nibula Director will determine which node to place the VM instance on and copies the machine image to the target node. During the starting state, Nibula Director initializes the VM instance's networking interfaces. Finally, the running state indicates that the VM instance has begun to boot. After the VM instance enters the running state, notice its IP address in the bottom pane. We'll click the View Console button to bring up an interactive console letting you log into the newly launched VM instance. Now we're in the Ubuntu VM instance and we can verify its uptime by issuing the uptime command. And we can check out its network interfaces by issuing the ifconfig command. So we've just created two internal customers for Acme Corporation called Acme and Contractors and then had the administrator for Contractors launch an Ubuntu VM instance. 